For hundreds of years, the Maasai have handcrafted jewelry in the form of beadwork. But now, diverse communities all over the world have embraced the beads culture. Meet Mr. Philip Lelgot, who earns a living out of beads as he tells us his story. I'm from Eldoret, uh, almost uh, 10 kilometers away from this town. And uh, I started doing this work long back, but I had to stop because of a place in Nairobi. I started by unemployment. I was employed by many companies that used to do this kind of work, African Heritage a bit, and then I, uh, there was a private entity that I had to start doing that bid work now. We were a group before. Then I started, uh, my work honestly was not doing any kind of bid work, but I had to develop that kind of bid work when I saw some people doing it and it was they were doing an army. Then during my free time I had to study and then after some years I had to stop because of um, a place. I was really looking for a place in Nairobi but I never caught it, though I used to come from this place. And Nairobi there was a very huge market of this kind of, there were foreigners coming, then we created friends, then they were giving me some orders when, while they were abroad. Financial difficulties have been one of the major problems business people face. Mr. Philip was not an exception. Then I had to, to stop because I, I didn't have a proper place to be. I used to do it in a street, kind of a street work. I didn't have a shop. By that time, there was, um, there was, shops were very expensive. I could not afford as a start. So when I started doing this kind of work, it was just a, a, in streets and then I was having some contacts with some people outside and internally and then I was taking their orders. I started by doing belts and then bracelets and then uh, later I started doing a, a beadwork to clothes, this kind of beadwork, all the kinds of beadwork in clothes, bracelets, um, belts headgears, anything that is bid work. And then uh, this was a kind of um, a work that when I started, I've never done any other work since I completed my school. When I completed schooling back way in the late 80s, 1987, I started doing this kind of work. I was first employed and later I started venture. I came to like it and I started as my own business. And I've never known any other business ever since. His passion and his experience in this business have seen him sustain his family. I'm married with children who go to school and I've been using the proceeds of this kind of work to pay school fees, farming, and I have some a piece of land that I put using this kind of work. So it's a work that I've done for so many years. From 87 to this, to this year it has been a very long, although I stopped somewhere in between. When I was transferring to Eldoret, and uh, when I saw at first there were no people were not interested in Eldoret with this kind of work, they they had never known it was only Nairobi. So I used to travel to Nairobi most of the time, weekly to Maasai Market to sell these wares. I used to make them, collect them, and take and take them, taking them to Maasai Market. And then as I was doing it. I used to, before I came here, there were some people here. And then a friend was going away, was wanted to, to start another business, and then he, he ended up at this kind of uh, place. This place belongs to Chumi, but uh, they gave us this place. It belongs to Chumi. I now pay Chumi supermarket my rent. Every month I pay, and then I sell my wares here. As compared to Nairobi, Eldoret bid market is not as vast. This posing a great challenge for Philip and others in this business to acquire raw materials regionally. Hence, have to travel all the way to Nairobi. Uh, I make some, I go to Nairobi to buy some, and uh, I get both uh, customers from here and then from outside. There are some people from outside, I have their contacts. I normally send some pictures of my wares, through the WhatsApp and other means of doing, of doing that business. So they give me some orders, I make them. 
there are some people, local tourism, I call local tourism, people who come to buy this kind of goods, they buy belts, they buy bracelets like the one I have right now. There are some orders I follow up. Despite the challenges he goes through in acquiring raw materials, Mr. Philip has developed his business contact not only locally, but also internationally. A belt, it is mostly three to four days. If it is a bracelet, when I, it depends now. If I don't have a lot of work to do, if I've never been given a lot of uh, orders, it's a day. It, something like a bracelet is just a day and some small, small things. I also have a workshop at home where they make this kind of goods, this kind of milk goods, and some other things. I may be given an order which is a big order. Then I have to, I have a workshop where I have employed two people plus my family. Sometimes we sit down with my family, we make them, I bring in the morning, I send them. So and that workshop has assisted me much because uh, sometimes I get a lot of orders. Even I have somebody who goes around selling these things and he comes in in the evening. And he brings some orders from outside. I normally go to markets, to different markets. Like for example, there is one in on Monday, there is another one on Tuesday, see what? There is another one and another one. So I send. He sends these kind of beads, and he collects some goods, and he collects some orders that we normally make. So on Monday again, he takes the the, the ones that we make, and he brings some some if he make it. And even here in town, there are some people who knows me and they come, some call me as far as in Nairobi because I normally do collections. This call, um, um, these artifacts, these traditional artifacts, like stools, spears, arrows, and all these kind of, the old na, the old things. I normally collect them to take them to Nairobi sometimes to, sell, to be selling them on Maasai, Maasai Market Day, which is on Tuesday. So I normally collect these old things and then I take them, I sell them and I buy some, I make some. And that has been business. But why did he quit his job for bids? I was employed. And later, when I, cre I developed this kind of uh, artwork, this kind of bid work, I saw it was paying more than my job. Because at times I could be given an order of maybe 5,000, 4,000 and I do maybe in a period of one week. So doing, doing this kind of employment, when I was employed, I was strictly employed with uh, 7,000. And that was all. And I'm doing it from morning to evening. And the same work which I'm doing there is almost the same work is, is less. What I was doing as, 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 as myself is more pain. At first I was a salesperson. And then when I created this kind of because there were some people bringing their wares. Then I made some friendship with them. Then they, were, they trained me. Then I started going with them because it was more easier to do work that was personal than when I was employed. Time management is very essential in every business. In this case, Mr. Philip, through his hard work, family support, and his employees' effort, is able to meet deadlines hence run his business smoothly. I normally buy them from Nairobi. I buy them in bulk because I normally sell them also. I sell beads also here. So when I, travel, uh, when I, I buy them from Nairobi, there are some old sellers, several of them in Nairobi, and they are a bit cheaper there. So when I buy them from Nairobi, I sell them here and I get some profit. Initially, I used to travel to Nairobi, mostly. But, but uh, I was looking for a place. So when I go to this place, I now settled here. I normally go to Nairobi maybe once in two weeks or maybe two times in, in one month. Norm when I have some things to take them there or when I, 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 I travel there to buy some things. But I have friends also. When I get some orders, I just call them, send money. I buy some specific things. They just put it in a matatu and then I receive them here. The beads industry is continuously increasing in Kenya and is being embraced by countries all over. Major buyers of beads are tourists followed by local Asians. My target market is uh, almost, uh, I like the, the ones uh, in abroad. 
when these visitors tourists tourists from outside there are some from america and all over the world wherever they come to Eldoret, they don't miss coming here because this is most of the place that is selling this kind that we have this mr phillips work cannot be underestimated as he can comfortably use his beads to make what you want according to your own taste and preference like they have uh, they have uh, the flag of their countries and the, that is it has been very the business has been so good because wherever they come they like kenyan but mostly they like kenyan bracelets that when they go to their place of origin they, they say we are coming from kenya and the flag of kenya is this so they order wherever they are here they order their these bracelets and they like the flag of kenya mostly they like the flag of kenya and some like the u.s flag every every country has a flag and uh, the good thing about it wherever they come and see kenyan they may say okay i like the kenyan the east african and there is also the local tour uh, the local tourism the, 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 i mean this the people from around here normally they like some come for east african flag they come from and even the students we, I, there is no day that goes without me making this or giving some friends to assist me when I get a lot of work. He comes in, he wants a bracelet with his name or a belt or a headgear or those. They, they really like it and it has been business to me. What are the benefits of the beads business? Okay, this kind of uh, work is so good because um, since I started this kind of work, I've never liked to do anything else apart from this work. And uh, instead of wasting a lot of time, time doing nothing, it's a work that you can do anywhere. You can do in your house, you come and sell them here, because I normally have some YouTube makes them. Even students from different institutions here, I have some customers who come and buy beads, and they are, they, 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 they are telling me they are doing a lot of work even in their institutions because they make this kind of bracelets, they sell to, to, our, to their friends and they sell even to, they are making business instead of, instead of waiting for their parents to send money. I have students who are trained both from different institutions here. So when they are free, they normally come and buy beads, they go and make them, they bring them I buy to sell. So in fact, instead of doing nothing or waiting to, for money to be to be sent by their parents from where they come from. Some have known and they have liked it so much, and I challenge them that instead of wasting a lot of years doing something, you can be doing them in, during your free time, even during holiday. It, it assists a lot instead of waiting for, for just to be to be given. So I challenge them really, even those who are finished schools, even during holidays, instead of being free you can engage in this kind of work. You can go to any country, like for example me, if I can be taken to any other country, I am, I'll, I'll never go and be employed. I'll just look for where beats are and some things to do, because I, I have some ta talent to do it myself. Mr. Philip enjoys profit from his business, but the income does vary from time to time due to various factors like tourism peak season, to orders being made among others. In terms of cash, it depends on a good day. There are some high time and low, low period of making this business. Sometimes if it is good, I can make some five bracelets or I, I can make something. Bracelets sometimes takes a lot of time, but that's no, it's not paying so much. But if I have a, this de decoration of clothes, it takes time, but it pays. Sometimes it ranges from maybe 2,000 to 3,000. Sometimes when it is good. But at times when I, ha when I sell some wares that orders, I mean, it can sometimes go up to 10,000. But sometimes you can stay for some days without selling. A month, yeah, it's hard to say, but sometimes it goes up to maybe 20,000 a month to 30. But sometimes it is good, but some, uh, it depends on the season. There is a season that you can, per week, you can even sell 20,000. 
but there is a season that you can make a lot of money per week. Sometimes it is between October and up to February. Mostly that is good for local tourism, local people here, because they have the harvest and they like buying, they have a lot of vacations. But sometimes between April and uh, August, there are some people from outside. And sometimes I, 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 I take this kind of business to other places like Nairobi. So if it is the season of here, it depends on which. If it is a local tourism, it is good from October to November, to, 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 to February. But the other month now is low from local tourism, it's very low. The beads culture is vast growing in Kenya, but those in this business think there is still more the government can do to expand the beads business. The county government... Okay, the county government should look for a place. This work is so good. And my real advice, and a cool, very good advice to the government is, we have a, 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 a culture. We have Ministry of Culture, uh, Tourism. They should look for a place. There are so many people who would want to venture into this work from this region, from this county, and they don't have a place to, 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 to do this work. So I request the county government to at least look for a place. When we go to Nairobi, we have a place. When we go to Mombasa, we have a place. And various counties in, in Eastern, the county government has a location a location where they, 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 they collect, um, they, they, they look for a piece of land and they get people who are willing. Because right now I have a very big list of people who ask me if they can join me here. So if they can have a place, it is a source of employment to some other people who have this talent and they don't have anywhere to display. So I would really want the government mm -hmm. and if they can do it urgently. When some visitors come here from different countries, it could be a place where they, these people could be taken to go and look our culture, which we are very much proud of. So I really wish the government, the county government, especially the county government, to at least look for a place so that we can have a government place where we, we do, like Nairobi, Mombasa, Malindi, and all those places, because the, 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 the government, the county government of those various places have known what we have never, what, what our county is not doing.